National Film Board of Canada presents... Perspective, a Canadian view of Canada, its people, and the world in which they live. There are two stories about the fire alarm box with the open door. It doesn't really matter which story is true. Whoever opened that door let out the bewildering past of the man we came to think of as the happy fugitive. But you, you can't fly on one wing, though. You look in some more of your pockets there. Yeah. One wing? A bottle of wine you call one wing? All right. <laughs> Three wings. And, oh, uh, let's get up here to, to keep our balance. I got a dollar. I'll buy. Oh, good. <laughs> and look, somebody left open the fire alarm. Uh, you know, if the kids see that, they'll ring it. Well, so let's close it. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get the fourth wing. <laughs> one dollar? You got one dollar? And what are you eating tomorrow? Ah, I got a pot full of vegetables and a nice hunk of stew and beef. When you got a pot full of vegetables and, and payday next week, well, you're having a good time. <laughs> a man shouldn't spend his last dollar. If you worry, the cops will get you. <laughs> Something's burning. Uh, some old lady never cleaned her oven. Keep a clean oven and you got no worries. <laughs> What's your name? Joe Sands. Did you ring that alarm? Alarm? Oh, 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 oh the fire alarm. <laughs> well, well, sure. I, I, I closed the door, but I okay, didn't ring it. Okay, come on, Sands. But, well, the, the door was open. It, it was open, so I, <laughs> I closed it. You coming? Yeah, I guess I'm coming. <laughs> Don't worry. Worry and the, the cops will get you. <laughs> What'll I get if I can't prove I'm innocent? You got 50 bucks, and you'll get 30 days. <laughs> 30 days? <laughs> That won't kill me. The other hand. You're going to do eight years. In KP. Where? Kingston Penitentiary. Huh. For, for uh, ringing up a, a false alarm? For breaking parole in 1928. Oh, is that so? <laughs> I don't remember. Amnesia? No, I just don't remember that far back. They gave you 15 years for armed robbery with violence. You served seven years. You were released in 1928 on ticket of leave. You reported three times and then skipped. You automatically forfeited two years good time you earned. That means you have eight years left to serve. What are you going to do about it? I'm going to do eight years, I guess. Well, Sands, that's 28 years you've been free. What have you been doing all that time? Living. 
just living. <laughs> Sands, you've got a date with the classification officer. Well, who's he? You have been away a long time. 28 years. By the way, that uh, cell block where I am now, didn't that used to be the woman's prison? They moved them all out when they heard you were coming. Oh, I'm too old. I wouldn't hurt them. <laughs> you may have young ideas. Oh, sure. I, I got young ideas, but act your age and you don't get tired. <laughs> Let's go. Have a seat. Good smoke if you want, Joe. Uh, what is a classification officer anyway? Three Sands, my job is to find a way, subject to regulations, to help you get along here and, oh, make the best of your stay with us. You're here to, to help me? <laughs> they, they sent me to the wrong place. <laughs> this is the pen. <laughs> Oh, boy, uh, this is the Royal York Hotel. <laughs> well, just now I was laughing and, and joking with the guard. <laughs> what do you know? I in my time, I if you tried to talk, well, you got five days in the hole. If the fellas talked about a guard, it was, uh, you, if I get to him, I'll, I'll knife him. <laughs> There's no more rule of silence and, and no more ban on tobacco and... No more of this uh, marching in, in, in drill formation every step you take. Well, I, uh, I'm glad you're getting along so well. Oh, I, 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 I got no worries. I always say worry and the cops will get you. <laughs> you know, one time up in Sarnia, <laughs> I, I wanted to work over the border, so I... Got a letter from the police saying I had no criminal record. <laughs> well, I don't get in no trouble. Only made one mistake. Hmm, but uh, that, that was a bad one, all right. That, that hold up back in 21. Uh, well, when they brought me in here the first time, I, I says, uh, I'll just do like they tell me and I'll be okay. <laughs> and I've been okay ever since. Well... You were released on ticket of leave. All you had to do was report regularly to the Sarnia police. Instead, you dropped out of sight for 28 years. Why? Oh, <laughs> I, I was helping some fellas up the lake with a boat. <laughs> that was some trip. <laughs> I, I never thought nothing about being late until I got back to my brother's place. Well, he's dead now. He was a good, steady fella. What happened when you got back, Joe? He, he told me that the RCMP had been round. Well, <laughs> right, right away I knew I was in for another eight years, so. And all, all on account of a boat with a bum motor. <laughs> so I just turned around and lit out of there. <laughs> but, well, I, I had my ticket to leave. I've been free and uh, out of trouble for 28 years, uh, they're not going to keep me here, are they? You uh, want to apply for another ticket of leave? Oh, sure. Uh, oh, same one will do fine. I, I don't need another one. <laughs> but there's been a violation. I, Well, the remission service might reconsider. Well, uh, when, when, when they know that I, I've been out of trouble for, for 28 years, uh, well, they'll know it's kind of silly keeping me here. Perhaps if you told me what you've been doing all, all those, those years, uh, there might be an investigation. I don't know. I, I don't remember some things too well. Uh, oh, where'll I start? Well, who are your friends? Uh, what jobs did you do? Who testifies as to your way of life? And that sort of thing. Friends? Uh, well, there's Maxwell Spivak. Uh, oh, oh, no, no, no. I, I don't want him brought into the city. He, he, he'd think I was letting him down. 
Maxwell Spivak. No, no, I, I'll tell myself when I get out. Uh, let me see now. The, oh, oh that, that place where I'm working now, uh, they're pretty good. Uh, there's a, uh, a foreman there by the name of Red Jackson. Uh, well, you, you taking this down? Well, if it goes before the remission service, we'll have to know the facts. Oh, oh yeah, sure, the, the facts. Uh, well... I don't remember too much, you know. I'll see you after lunch. Come in, Fred. You got something a little unusual here. Oh, I got some news myself. Mike Presmo went out in a score last night and they caught him red-handed. What happened to him? Oh, I don't know. I thought I was getting along pretty well with Mike. The thing that bothers me, he phoned me last night. Didn't say what he wanted, just phoned and talked. My chance to help him, I guess. If I could have said the right thing at that moment. Now, back to the pokey for Mike. Maybe we'll get somewhere next time. Next time looks like about five years from now. Something from Ottawa? Yes. Uh, here's a chap in Kingston who's been wanted 28 years. Now they've picked him up, and he has eight years to serve. And after being on the loose for 28 years? All he's wanted for his violation of parole. And it seems there's nothing to indicate he's been in any trouble all these years. Mm, that would seem likely as they'd have had him before this. Well, you can't tell. Well, there it is. It's your baby. Remission service want to know two things. How has this man been putting in his time during that past 28 years? And would the John Howard Society be interested in supervision if they should grant him another ticket? Mm-hmm. Cabbage Town addresses. Landlady, foreman, River Street. It's like pulling teeth to get information down there. <laughs> Start pulling teeth, Ray. Not many references. Is this guy absent-minded or is he trying to hide something? Well, just one thing, Fred. I, uh, I know how enthusiastic you get about your people. Just remember, it's not up to us. The remission service aren't interested in our opinion. All they want are facts. They'll decide about the ticket. After Mike Presmore, I listen to reason. <laughs> fire alarm? After 28 years free, a fire alarm? Yes, does he live here? No, he don't. Well, I was given this address. I'm uh, trying to locate him concerning a family matter. A family matter? Well, then maybe you can tell me who's going to pay his rent. Oh, does he have trouble paying his rent? Not till he skipped out on me, he didn't. Just skipped out, leaving some old tools and nothing much else. And he ain't getting those tools until he pays me twelve fifty. Two weeks I held that room, and where is he? You have no idea where he might be? No. You his relation? No, I'm uh, acting for the family. How long did he live here? Six months. Did he ever mention any friends that uh, might help me locate him? Friends? Well, if he had any friends, I never saw any. 
I run a decent place and I don't bother my tenants so long as they behave and pay the rent. Twelve fifty he owes me, but I got his tools. Oh, what sort of tools are they? Just tools. Do you know what he uses them for? No. How would I know? Oh, thanks. Oh, do you know a Maxwell Spivak? Are you looking for him, too? Yes. Do you know him? No. You see Joe Sands. You tell him he don't get his tools until I get my 1250. I was looking for 172. Uh, there it is. Well, I thought it was a rooming house address. Oh, I tore that place down three months ago. Oh. Well, I was looking for a man named Joe Sand. Oh. Yeah, there was a fellow that name lived here four or five years. Did you know him? Oh, rooming houses, people come, people go. Uh -huh. They never get to know him. Did you know where the landlord got to? Yeah, cemetery. Was there any family? Yep, widow. Sold out, went to the States. Don't know what state, though. You're a bit late, bub. It's in the records, all right, but the company's changed hands. There's nobody else around here who know your man except his old foreman, Jack Martin, and he's dead. Died in the subway three days ago. Heart attack. Sorry, there's nobody else around here who could help. Well, that's that then. Thanks. You're welcome. something? Are you old Max? Yeah, Max Spivak. Oh, oh, Max Spivak. Yeah, Joe mentioned you. Joe? You seen Joe? Well, not yet, but I'm trying to help him. I was wondering if you could give me a little information. Information? What information? What for? He's got enough trouble now. I don't want to make more trouble for him. What information is there? What trouble did you mean? The trouble, a justice trouble. So maybe he rings a fire bell. Is that for the penitentiary? Oh, oh, you heard about that, eh? I go down to the Don jail. They tell me, no, he's in Kingston. He's a thief or a murderer, maybe, because he rings a fire bell. I tell you the kind of people would belong in penitentiary. One night I am slugged by a pair of them, right here. One dollar and 50 cents I have. They slug me and they take away my one dollar and 50 cents. Jackasses. And now they treat Joe like one of these jackasses. Why? Well, it's one of those unfortunate things that happen once in a blue moon. You're, uh, you're pretty friendly with Joe, are you? Friendly? Beautiful, eh? Fishing gear. Seventy-five to a hundred dollars maybe we got. Away from starving, I am by 50 cents. But never sell the fishing gear. Five years ago, Joe and me, we spent the summer fishing at Garden Lakes. We worked for the farmers, for vegetables, and we fish. Good life. You think this is a good life? Five years ago now, we planned to retire to our shack at Garden Lakes and fish. You known Joe a long time? A long time. Twelve years. You think maybe a, a, a pushcart man is a, a funny friend for a good, respectable man like Joe, eh? I'm not always a pushcart man, only since I hurt my leg. Twelve years ago, we both meet together and we work. A good job for the hydro construction company 
in Niagara Falls. Well, look, Max, if you want to help Joe, give me all the facts you can about him for those 12 years back. Why? They want to know in Ottawa. Those facts will help them to decide whether to release Joe or not on ticket of leave. Sure, I help him. He's a good man. Somebody else I give you to tell you he's a good man. Donald Watson. Yes? Uh, are you Donald Watson? Speaking. Oh. Well, I'm I'm trying to get a little information. Uh, do you know a man named Joe Sands? Sands? I knew a Joe Sands of Sarnia. That's the one. What's it about? Well, my name is Dawson, and uh, I've been asked to get certain information on a fairly personal matter. I wonder if you knew Mr. Sands very well. Well, he lived in my house for a year when I was in the Sarnia force. I haven't seen him for ten years or so, but uh, he always sends me a Christmas card each year with a Toronto postmark. Then you must have been pretty friendly with him. That'd be a lot you could tell me. I don't know. If you want any information out of me, you'll have to uh, tell me what it's for. Yeah, I guess so. I'm from the John Howard Society. The remission service has asked us to check back on 28 years of Joe's past. The remission service? Yeah. Seems he got frightened back in 1928, overdue reporting on his ticket, and disappeared. Why, <laughs> that happy-go-lucky son of a gun. Living in my house and on the wanted list. <laughs> what sort of a person was he? Happy, cheerful, happy guy. Living in the present all the time. Never a thought about tomorrow. Nor yesterday either, I suppose. He had some uh, construction job down there. Look, are we talking about the same joker? Mm -hmm. Well, what did he do to get sent up? I could have sworn that Joe Sands didn't have a criminal bone in his body. Can I quote you? Yeah, you can quote me. <laughs> I got him a letter from the department to show the Americans he didn't have a criminal record. You sure it's the same joker? Yeah. Well, I can tell you about him. Maybe he had one criminal bone and they removed it. Since you've worked with these two men in the past and have been in correspondence with them, Perhaps you should go down to Kingston and see them on a pre-release basis. I think maybe this time I should get off to a good start with them. And what about Joe Sands? Well, we've answered one part of the request from remission service. Sands has been living a reasonably productive life for at least 22 of the 28 years. Now to the other part. Are we willing to exercise supervision if he makes a ticket? Then you can see him at the same time. I don't even know the guy. And I hope he makes it. Just keep that out of your report. <laughs> the John Howard Society tries to assist men on release from prison and also helps to supervise men on ticket of leave. So that's why I'm here. I'd like to find out if you'd be willing to cooperate with us in getting this matter cleared up. Now, it's entirely up to you. If you feel you can't cooperate, it's okay with me. It's your decision. But if you think you can help us, there's a lot of information I'd like to get. Well, sure. When you got a pot full of vegetables, all you need is good conversation. Yes, I know. Now, one thing I'd like to do is check the information we got in the community. What community? Oh, talking to people like your landlady and your foreman and... My landlady? Was you talking to her? How is the old girl, anyway? You know that woman... I never saw her smile one time in the whole six months I was living there. Uh, and then there's Max Spivak. Old Max? Yes, he gave us a very good recommendation. Oh, you, you didn't tell old Max about the, me being mixed up in that holdup back in 21. Oh, we talked to people and revealed only what we had to. Now, you remember you applied for a ticket and gave certain information about your past. So you know what he calls people like that, don't you? He, he calls them jackasses. Old Max doesn't think you're a jackass. What else can he think? Uh, oh, we're going to retire to Garden Lakes and uh, work for vegetables, have a little shack, and uh, lots of fresh air and fish. Maybe he won't want it now. He's counting on it. 
You have no worry in the world there, Joe. Good old Max. Now, one thing we have to talk about is your planning. Uh, what you do with yourself, where you intend to live, what you'd work at. Well, uh, no problem there. Huh? I'll go back to Toronto. Huh? I want to be where I can find friends. So it's Cabbage Town. Uh, until we can get to a garden lace, that is. Cabbage Town. Uh, you gotta live where you can live. Another thing to thrash out is the possibility of your social activity getting you into trouble. Now, you have no relatives, so what about your friends? I, uh, I suppose you'll be seeing Max Spivak. What about it? What I'm getting at is that the remission service will want to know the sort of people you're going to be associating with. After all, there's a clause in the ticket that says you can't associate with known thieves. Oh, Max is no thief. Well, he, he, he never stole a thing in his life. Well, why, uh, when you're only 50 cents from starvation, uh, boy, to, to steal two bits, it, it, it's like murder to old Max. Besides, we, we get along great. And we know how to make money together. He finds things, and I repair them, sell them. Rent's cheap. A uh, guy can get along great if he, he don't need a lot of fancy stuff in his life. Uh, oh, no. Oh, 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 Maxie, he don't need to steal. I, I'm too old. Uh, I got sense enough not to get mixed up in, in any more of that jackass trouble. <laughs> okay, but if they do give you a ticket and you find you can't make a go of it, we don't want to see you getting fed up and down the dumps. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Uh, whenever I get down the dumps, I, I just get out the, the old fishing rod. <laughs> or, or in the wintertime, I, I buy a lot of vegetables and, and cook me a good meal. When you got a pot full of vegetables, you got no worries. <laughs> Worry? <laughs> the cops will get you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Joe Sands, the happy fugitive. 28 years free and suddenly back in prison because of a fire alarm. Our report to the remission service was precise and factual. Justice proved itself flexible. In this case, consistent with justice for all, justice for one. It's been a grand visit. <laughs> Let's go, Joe. Joe Sands, the happy fugitive. The only man who ever thanked the warden for his hospitality and meant it. This week's perspective was directed by Fergus McDonald. Written by George Salverson. Photography, Eugene Boyko. Sound recording, Frank Orban. Editor, Dennis Sawyer. Production assistant, Blanche Markle. Location manager, Stanley Klish. Sound editor, Stuart Baker. Special sound, Joan Edward. Perspective is a National Film Board of Canada production. Produced by Julian Bates.